And the new kid on the political block, Raya Zamzansi, is gearing up for next year's general elections. The party's three-day People's Convention conference has wrapped up at Constitution Hill. Aviwe Mdila joins us now for more on the party's planning. Good afternoon again, Aviwe, and thanks again for your time. It really sounded like a well-put-together conference and uh, with clear guidelines in terms of what they want to achieve. Certainly, uh, it's now time for the festivities, but of course, a bit earlier on, we heard the declaration there by the leader of six-month-old Rise Mzansi, that would be Songe Zozibi, uh, just mentioning uh, that now the South Africans can take politics seriously, and they're here to prove that uh, politics can be for the people. We heard in that declaration, of course, speaking of eradicating inequality, eradicating racism uh, and poverty in its entirety and creating jobs, some of what the party looks to prioritize as they head to the national elections in 2024. Now, let's just bring in the leader of Rise of Mzansi, the song is Wazibi. Uh, I'm thank you for joining us at ENCA, but you speak of eradicating uh, inequality, racism, and poverty. How are you planning to go about these things? So, Rise of Mzansi, we have set ourselves up as a, as, a move, as a movement that includes all sectors of society. And we think the first thing that's important is to just change our mindset because for the last 30 years the conversation has been about alleviating poverty which means you make it a little bit better and not eradicate it completely and that mediocrity in expectation is problematic because it's part of the reason we're here so that that is the first thing with all of these things that we talked about but, but let me make an example about racism as, a, as, a, as, as an example because anybody who lives in orange farm and works in Santin or in the job CBD who has to leave home at half past four to get, get here at seven o'clock and then go home and never get to meet their children. The racist spatial planning that made sure those are the conditions of people is exactly what we need to change. So that means investing in community infrastructure, investing in, uh, in provincial infrastructure, bulk services, public transport that is not taxes but municipal buses and so on. Because if you can reduce the impact of racism on people, then you end racism and you can have a non-racial society. But when we speak of inequality, it is of course a thorn on the side of South Africa. It's the most unequal society in the world. Surely a burning issue. How we realistically on the ground are you going to eradicate inequality? So let's understand why there's inequality to begin with. 48% of kids that begin school never finish. The biggest driver of our inequality is that millions of people are not earning an income at all which means the inequality is linked to three things. It's linked to nutrition and dealing with hunger and stunting. It's linked to education and training outcomes. It's also linked to, to managing the economy effectively so that people can find work. If we don't do those three things together, we are not going to be able to deal with inequality. And Rising Zanzi has a systematic approach to resolving these issues. Okay, six-month-old Rising Zanzi is adding to the political fray, which already has over 500 political parties that are registered. What are you going to do differently? Well, we are with the people. The fundamental proposition of Rising Zanzi is that, as I said in the speech, we are not political service providers. That's what we have been doing since November last Last year, we're not political service providers. This is an opportunity for South Africans to rise themselves to fight for the future that we believe in. And we are the political platform to do that. Our candidate selection process will see our activists and volunteers going out to recruit the best people in their communities to go to parliament because democracy is about people on the ground choosing who is going to represent them. And historically, South Africans have tended to sway more to the older political parties than trust new political parties. How are you going to convince them to vote for rising sands? That's actually not true. The majority of South Africans don't vote for anyone at all. Out of 41 million voters we had in 2021, 28 million did not vote. 
14 million of those were registered. There are even more now. What we have to do in South African democracy today is to convince those who are not voting and those who are skeptical about politics to go back and vote and reclaim their rights and rise in Zanzibar's political culture. It's ground up and grassroots nature is inclusive and encourages people to participate in the politics. And there's a lot of talk heading to the national elections 2024 about coalition governments. We're already seeing the DA lead a moon pact with other political parties. We're seeing COPE also trying to maybe mimic the same. Are you considering even joining these or what's your plan for the election? The most important coalition that we are part of and that we are growing right now is a coalition of civil society and community organizations. Those are the people that are fighting daily struggles, fighting against crime, against drugs, against unemployment, trying to put food on the table. One of the things that puts voters off is when politicians get together to work out a deal about the spoils of power. When you have not said exactly what are your priorities, how are you going to deal with them, and therefore, what is the basis of this coming together? Is it to just remove someone from power or to solve the problem? We have chosen to be honest to the idea that politics is about solutions, it's about building a broad coalition in society and fighting the election on that basis. After the election next year, if there is a coalition government, we will be able to demand a pound of flesh on behalf of our voters from whoever wants to go into a coalition. All right, thank you very much. Songhez Ozibi, the leader of uh, six-month-old Rise in Zanzi, saying that uh, society needs solutions and they're there to provide those solutions. Of course, uh, they're saying that 2024, uh, those crucial elections that a lot of people speak of, uh, the advent of uh, national coalition governance, uh, they're saying that it will be day 1994, looking to change things uh, just for broader society in its entirety. And they're very confident, of course, uh, as the six-month new kid on the block, uh, in that their prospects of success are actually quite um, not formidable, but, you know, that they, they do have a shot uh, when it comes to prospective voters because South Africans are sick and tired of being sick and tired, as he spoke about earlier on, uh, Aviwe. But thank you, indeed. That's ENCA reporter Aviwe Ndila, who is at Constitution Hill as uh, the Rise of Zanzi political party wraps up its people's convention that they had a little bit earlier.